everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today we are going to be continuing on with a rather long running series on my channel, which is to examine antique garments in my collection. And this is one of my most recent purchases, which actually was from last fall because I haven't bought anything recently. I've been good, I know, right? And I just fell in love with these colors. I found this one on eBay and the colors just screamed at me. This vibrant, vibrant blue silk of the bodice with the hot pink silk under black lace of the neckline. Like what? These are not colors that I feel like we think about for the Victorian or Edwardian era. This bodice dates to just about the turn of the century. So like just about 1900. So I guess the very, very tail end of the Victorian era. And like, that's just not colors that we think about, right? I mean, hot pink and black lace, scandalous. Anyway, I thought that this would be a really, really fun one to take a look at. If you're interested in seeing other antiques in my collection, I do have a link to the entire playlist, which I will put right up here and also down below in the description. And let's go ahead and get super up close so that I can show you all of the details on this lovely lady. So starting with the front of her, I have her on my small dress form, but obviously she is so, so tiny. I will be sure to get measurements at the end, but this is one of the only bodices that I have where even the waist stay won't actually fit around the waist of this dress form. So incredibly tiny. <laughs> I mean, just as an example, this little belt here that loops around, this is actually supposed to go in to this thread bar right here. So that is how far off we are from this dress form, which I think was like a 26 inch waist. So she's probably a 23 or smaller inch waist, but again, I will take that measurement later when I have her flat. So looking at the neckline here, this is just the stunning part. I mean, she's all stunning, but this hot pink. Now, obviously she's in a bit of a disrepair. This hot pink is actually like completely shattering. A lot of it is being held together just because it's sandwiched within these layers. So there is an under layer underneath here that is actually almost like a burlap looking. It's it's softer and finer than that, but it is so open weave. It was probably an organdy in its day. That is my guess, just based on the weave, but maybe a tarlatan, basically a stiffer fabric that is very open weave. And the silk from the neckline, which is a very fine silk, like almost a China silk, I feel like that was mounted on top of that and then we have the lace over the top so the lace is actually caged in a lot of the silk here it's just keeping it nice and intact as much as possible but again if we get really close you can see that it is just like shredded in there and obviously there is a big section where it has come away from the collar because the tarlatan or whatever that backing was also came away and so it allowed that area to disintegrate a lot further than like the rest of this for example. This is trimmed with just a really beautiful chenille edged ruffle. So this ruffle is silk satin, like the actual fabric of it, but then we have chenille right here and also down at the bottom. And then this chenille, like almost braided trim. I'm not exactly sure how that chenille trim was made, but it does feel like it's some sort of a, a braid almost. On the other hand, this chenille, it's like a tiny little row of piping and it's actually been put on with zigzag stitches. Look at those zigzag stitches, both on the top and on the bottom. You can see the backside of the zigzag stitches even where it's mounted onto the silk. And down here we have the same ruffle, even though this top beautiful chenille braid is totally covered, it still is attached there. So my guess is that this trim was actually sold like as a whole piece. Someone else probably manufactured the trim and then the trim was stuck onto this neckline area, but it's really just lovely. And I also find it very interesting that our top piece of trim here is continuous, but our bottom piece of trim actually stops a little bit over, it'll probably go to about right here where this hook is, is, and then we have it on this side over here. So this is a very typical neckline closure of the era where we have a center front closure down most of it and then the collar laps over and closes up the shoulder and the back of the neck. So I'll show you that a little bit more as we get there. But yeah, this is a very, very common closure. If you've seen a lot of my other videos, you'll have seen something similar. I also really like sort of this almost like draped 
pleated folded section of the silk layer here on the center front. These ones I feel like are maybe a little bit more intact where you can see kind of more of them. And I think that's just really lovely. And that is caused by up at the top, it's actually gathered into a yoke. So that's why we get the excess fabric. And then it's kind of just been brought down over the bust and all pleated very, very nice and neatly down here at the waist. Just lovely. And I have her pinned all over to the dress form to get it to stay. And then the waist is covered over by another sort of like, pleated, almost ruched. It's like it's all twisted up this band and it is just sort of like twisted and pleated. And I feel like it was originally twisted and pleated too, because we can especially see it on the back here. We'll take a little bit closer look when I actually turn her around, but we can see where it's all just kind of like pleated and bunched and it makes a really nice effect. You can also see a join right there. In the fabric so this is actually cut on the bias because we can see this bias join and also just the fact that like here in this silk we see the ribs running diagonally whereas down here we see them running vertically so that's how we know this is on the bias so as i was saying before the closures are hidden inside here so this silk is over the top of a fitted inner layer we'll look more at that when we look at the inside but we have really large hooks and eyes on here and they are alternating which was very very common so you can see the same ones over here and then what's very interesting and i have not seen before are these bars right here so i haven't ever seen a bar that looks like that before I just find them like a very, very interesting shape. You can see another one right there. They're black and they were like a gold, but they're black coated. And I've never seen anything like that before. And then they have really standard looking hooks that go into them. Okay, let's take a look at the back. So the back is quite a bit more fitted than the front. We just have a little bit of excess coming in here to the waist and that has actually been gathered up with little running stitches right there and then tacked in place. And that just provides this little bit of like a fan pleated right here. And it's really like, it's not done neatly pleated. It's just kind of gathered and scrunched up. But I think it looks quite nice. And we again can see the twist of the belt fabric. I'm not really sure how or why that was done but I do find it an interesting detail. You see the layers in there. And it is actually tacked in place too, so like we can't undo it. Look at those layers. And we have another join right here. The sleeves are just a little bit puffed. That's one of the things that makes me think this is right around the turn of the century because we are getting that high collar, the yoke top, and then just a little, little puff of the sleeve. So we have a little bit of gathering going on. You can see the pink coming away there. But actually what's interesting about that, and this could be wrong, but it appears that the pink is actually inside the seam. So that's interesting because I, feel like it shouldn't be. <laughs> I didn't notice that before. This is a two-piece shaped sleeve so we have the seam coming down the back as well as the seam here providing the shaping for the sleeve and then by the time we get to the bottom it gets so narrow that a wrist wouldn't be, or a hand wouldn't be able to fit through it so we have a slit and this one doesn't have any sort of closure it's just a slit but it would fall together most likely on the wrist because the wrist is nice and narrow but this allows for the width of the hand to get through. Looking at the inside of the sleeve, we can see that it is lined with just a brown polished cotton, kind of the most common lining, and that actually the hem is just a fold. It's not any sort of facing, it's just a pretty deep fold, probably about an inch and a quarter deep, this fold. There is some additional shaping on this bodice too on the outside, because this is actually a dart right here, and then we get all of the sort of gathery, pleaty bit in the front. One other sleeve detail I should mention, which is very common in shaped sleeves of this era, is that the elbow has actually been gathered on one side. So that really helps to give it that shape when we get that gather in the elbow. The collar, by the way, as you can see, is edged with just this little bit of ivory, sort of like a crochet or a tatted lace. It's a little heavier duty of a lace. And the lace here, this is probably like a purchased 
lace that just has a really neat effect. I'm not sure exactly how this would be made. It's lovely. I mean, the little bits are quite delicate, but it's got all these little nubbies on it too, which are rather fun. And then we have the flowers and these sort of infinity figure eight symbols and also like this little paisley swirl. So if you look at it, it is actually like we have a stripe of each of these. I think that if the bodice were to be closed all the way, we would find that our paisley stripe is actually like center. And then we have, you know, these are kind of all vertical. Right now they're obviously all pulling to the side because it does not fit, but I do find that quite interesting. So let's go ahead and open this collar and just see what's inside. Oh, the pink the pink. Yeah, obviously this is really delicate. So this part right here, the collar, I find this so interesting because this is like, I don't even know, it, it like, it's like straw. It's so, it's so dense. I think maybe it's buckram, to be honest. I think it is buckram. And I mean, this is stiff, like it is still stiff. So this really would have kept the collar quite nice and tall. There are no bones in this collar, which was common in this era. Actually, you would get little bones in the collar. There are none here. We don't need any because we have buckram in our collar instead. We have a hat making material in our collar. As you can see, we've got three hooks right here. These go to the back right in there, or kind of actually, they go to like the side back. It goes right around to here. So we'll look at that in a little bit. And then we have, we can see the tarlatan or organdy, whatever this was. And again, up here in particular, it's just so sad, but the pink is so lightweight. It's no wonder that it's fallen apart. I mean, it's like gossamer thin. It is just so light. And this would have connected up to there once upon a time. This would have also connected up to there to protect it. And you can see all of like the hand stitching that held the this part of the collar into the standing collar. And also how the pink didn't have an edge. My guess is that there was probably a lining on here at one point because I can't imagine that either of these, buckram or tarlatan or whatever, would be very comfortable next to the skin because tarlatan is still very scratchy. It's rough and scratchy. So there may also have been a lining that is long since gone. I can't find any evidence of the lining like in all of the hand stitching. I see no evidence of the lining, but it would have protected the raw edges because we have raw edges on our pink silk and it would have protected the wearer from, oh, all of that. We also have very interesting giant basting stitches here, which I'm guessing is just kind of helping the lace stay on the collar and not kind of fall away from the collar. But it's interesting how giant these are. I mean, this is like an inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half. These are humongous. So a lining would have protected. And actually it's possible this could be a remnant of lining. So it could have had a little ivory silk lining and that is just all that remains. So as we come across over here, we again see all of the hand stitching and more of these hooks that go all the way around. And eventually we get to the center with those hooks and eyes. But looking over at this side, this is the side that gets overlapped. We actually, and this is super common on all garments of this era, really, whenever you have like a decorative piece over here, they don't actually make the silk go all the way because you don't need it. So this collar covers to here. So we get a little bit extra blue silk with the ruched section and then a little bit that almost is like a facing right here. And then it is just our polished cotton lining. So this is just one layer of polished cotton right up here. It has just been turned over for the hem and stitched, hand stitched right here on the hem of the neckline. And then this is machine stitched here. But yeah, just very, very, very simple up at the top because no one's going to see it. And here we see all of our bars. So they're all that very interesting bar that I've never seen before right along the top of the chenille trim. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take her off of the form now so that we can really look at the inside. So for one thing, what we can see a lot more when she's down is that there was a lot of wear in this bodice. Someone sweated into this bodice and that blue silk color did not hide anything. So it has turned very green over the armpits. But when we open her up and look inside, to be very gentle with the collar, 
Again, we see how the hooks and eyes right here are all structured, and there's actually a bone right here too, and I'll show you, there's a lot of bones in this, but one thing that I find very, very interesting is this snap. I've never seen a snap like this before, but there is actually a snap that goes from this side to over here. Look at that. Now, I am not positive when snaps were invented. I'll pop a date up on screen if I can find it, but... I have never seen a snap like this before. I've never seen a snap in an antique garment like this, even at least not from the 19 teens, I think, or later. And so it's very interesting to see that in here. I don't know if it's original, but I'm going to say maybe. So opening her up all the way. Oh, look at the finishing on this. She's gorgeously finishing. She is not homemade. She is actually from Spamer. Spammer? Spamer? Something like that. 124 Park in Baltimore. I'm guessing 124 Park Ave is probably like a downtown address if it's a Park Ave. So there we go, Spamer. I couldn't find anything about Spamer as a dressmaker company. And in fact, actually, although there is a Patterson Park Ave downtown, I don't know like this address just a park app doesn't even come up in Baltimore. However, I did find a genealogy about the Spamers of Baltimore, so I will link that down below in case anyone's interested. Again, couldn't find any information about them being a dressmaker, but maybe someone in the family was. So looking at the inside here, first we see all of the hand sewing lines from all that trim on the outside, which I just kind of love it when it's like really rough looking hand sewing. You can see that here, like on the collar, they really did a lot of basting of the lace itself. Like maybe there were parts that were just poofing away and they wanted to make it nice and secure. So they put all that basting on. And that's probably why so much of this pink silk is really sandwiched in place. It's because it's literally stitched through in place. Then we also see these gorgeous, gorgeous seams. I mean, the seams that go all the way through, so the three seams on each side that go all the way through to the blue silk, these have been bound in black, like probably a china silk, and they have even gone and clipped the curves and bound the curves. And I feel like that level of detail and professionalism is just very admirable, and I love it. On the other hand, the seams that are just through the cotton, these are French seams. So we can see they're fully encased. Very nice. They did a really great job of that and it's stitched with machine both sides of those. So we have there and then also here in the center back and here. Then there has been just a little bit of boning applied. So we have this really, I mean, this is a wide bone. This is like wider than most corset bones and very stiff, but this has been applied to the center back. It goes all the way down to the point right here and then up to kind of mid back. And then in the front, we have a couple more bones. Again, we have the one that is right here in the closure area. So it's actually underneath the hooks and eyes. And then we also have this bone right here, which is kind of like the bust dart bone. Uh, it's looks like it's right on the edge of the facing. Now this one has kind of poked itself up. And I noticed that even when putting it on the dress form that it just really wanted to like poke away. So mm, this bone is kind of dangerous because of that. It also has a really interesting curve. It's opposite this curve right here. It's opposite from its pair. I don't know why, but one's curved one way and one's the other. Maybe the way that it was stored, they both got a little curved. I'm not sure. One thing that I find interesting is that that belt that has all the tucks and everything from the outside, it is actually just folded over and also used as the facing. So maybe that's why there are so many of the tucks because really like it's just our bias and then it has excess and they tucked it up and made it interesting looking. That's a, definitely a possibility. The other thing that I find interesting is usually a waist stay is the strongest portion of a garment. This one has seen better days. So we actually have tearing almost all the way throughout this waist stay. Like this is one that even if I could close it around the dress form, I really, I would not because there is just, it is, it's brittle and it has broken kind of everywhere. But we do have very, very large hooks on here. This would have attached to the back of the skirt to keep the bodice together with the skirt. My camera is saying that it's running rather hot right now, so I do apologize if there was any shift in the light or the quality, but I'm going to try to keep going and get this done for you because we're almost there. So the shoulder seams are also 
found in the blue. And you can also see the pink with the lace actually just coming through. And this edge of the pink has just been sort of basted down. I think they folded it under so there's not a raw edge, but it's just been basted down right here on top of the blue. The sleeves, based on the fact that they are gathered on the inside too, it is likely the same shape on the inside as it was on the outside. Ooh, and actually, look at this little sneak peek. We get to see that there is probably tarlatan, something similar inside the sleeve, which is helping to give it a little bit more puff because there's a little slit here. Yeah, I think it's it's a different, slightly different because it's whiter than what is here on the collar, but it looks like it's the same weight. So I think that's that tarlatan or organdy or whatever that is in there. Looking at how this is actually made, we can see that for the lining pieces, there's quite a bit of them. We have a front piece, side front, side back, side center back, and center back. So there's actually 10 pieces in this bodice. That's really a lot of pieces. And then of course the outside, but the outside we have less pieces because these are all combined into one piece. So let's go ahead and get some measurements off of this. And otherwise I think that is about it. So as I thought, she is really very tiny. She's about 24 and a half inches around the waist. So very, very small, does not fit my dress form. Based on that small of a waistline and the fun colors, it's entirely possible that this could have been worn by a very young woman, but it is hard to say overall. However, she was also probably quite a curvy woman because the bust is quite a bit bigger than that 24 inch waist measurement. We're looking at probably about a 33 inch bust, maybe even a little bit more. It's hard to get tension on a bust like this. And I think that is everything that I have for you today. I do hope that you have enjoyed today's video on this absolutely gorgeous antique piece in my collection. I mean, I still can't get over those colors. They really are just absolutely fabulous. And I'm so pleased to have this one as part of my collection. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and other random costuming content like this out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram, that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I would also like to give a special shout out to all of my absolutely wonderful patrons, but especially those patrons at the Romantic Victorian and Edwardian level tiers, who are Sharon, Julie, Mirage, Ari, Audra, Emily, Jean, Kim, Linda, Maria, Renee, Sarah, Tiffany, Cherries, Denise, Liz, Elizabeth W, and Heather. Thank you all absolutely so, so much. I seriously could not do all of this video, sewing, etc. without you guys. My patrons are just the best. If you would like to join my Patreon, again, that link is down in the description. And thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!